Hello, my name is Brian Atkinson and welcome once again to UK Aircraft Explored. In today's video, we shall be covering the Avro Lancaster's oil system. We shall be referring to the wartime Air Ministry manuals that were used by air and ground crews at the time. I hope you find this interesting. An independent oil system is provided for each of the Lancaster's four Merlin engines. The oil tank is mounted in the engine subframe and the oil cooler on the starboard side of the coolant radiators below the front of the engine. The main feed pipe is taken from the filter in the oil tank and passes forward through a fair lead in the fireproof bulkhead to the engine oil pump. The oil is returned via the oil cooler to the top of the partial circulation compartment in the tank. The vent pipe is taken from the top of the oil tank to a connection on the engine. The pipes are of copper with flexible joints and with the exception of the main feed pipe are supported at the fireproof bulkhead by flange unions secured by bolts. The propeller feathering pump is mounted in the subframe and is fed by a pipe from the bottom of the oil tank. The oil is fed forward from the pump by a flexible pipe and is connected at the bulkhead to the engine pipe. The oil temperature and oil pressure gauges are mounted on the flight engineer's panel. Provision is made for oil dilution to insist engine starting at low temperatures by means of a solenoid operated valve on the starboard side of the engine mounting. The valve is arranged to pass fuel from the fuel pump outlet to the oil feed pipe when the push button on the flight engineer's panel is pressed. The inboard and outboard oil tanks differ in shape, but are of the same capacity. Each tank carries 37.5 gallons of oil, including 2 gallons for the operation of the hydromatic propeller, and an airspace of 4.5 gallons. The tanks are constructed of light alloy sheet with welded joints. The partial circulation compartment is circular in plan and of the full depth of the tank, and the top is formed by a circular de-aerating ramp to which is fitted a diffusing ring. The return oil passes through a nozzle into the ring and is spread over the ramp as it flows into the compartment, which is of two gallons capacity. Vent holes are formed in the top of the ramp which is attached to the tank shell by special bolts. The bottom of the compartment is formed by a separate ring into which the upper portion fits, leaving an annular space between. The upper edge of this ring governs the hydromatic oil reserve level, below which oil cannot enter the filter. These two sections are riveted together, but the gap is maintained by distance tubes. The bottom ring and the oil filter are attached to the tank shell by studs. The oil filler cap, which is attached to a hinged arm, is on the port side of the tank, and in the tail down position, the oil level corresponds with the bottom edge of the filler opening. The hinged door is provided on the port side of the nacelle fairing to give access to the filler and a drain plug is provided in the bottom of each tank. Inspection doors are located on the front of the outboard tanks and the starboard end on the inboard tanks. A self-sealing covering is applied to the whole external surface of the tanks, including the inspection doors. Where the covering is broken for fittings and connections, these are attached to the tank by studs, which project beyond the covering and secure the flanged clamping rings which seal the edges. Canvas reinforcing strips are provided on the surface of the coverings in way of the securing straps. The outboard tanks are each supported on two light alloy bearers which extend aft from the fireproof bulkhead and are attached to the cross members of the engine subframe by bolts and clips. The tank bearers are of box section being formed from two side plates 
with channels between, and are connected at each end by a tubular stay, to which are fixed the tank straps. The inboard tanks are mounted in straps in the engine subframe, between the main wheel unit support beams and the fireproof bulkhead. The straps are carried on two cross tubes attached by means of bolts, brackets and clips to the struts of the subframe and to the support beams. An oil filter from which the engine feed is taken is fitted into the bottom of each tank and projects below the surface. The casing is of light alloy casting. The inlet ports are raised above the tank bottom and are surrounded by a baffle ring under which the oil passes. Above the ports, a piston is normally held in position by prongs projecting from the filter element below. When the element is withdrawn for cleaning, a spring forces the piston down and the ports are sealed. The filter element is secured to the lower end of the outer casing by means of a hand screw in a special nut fitting. And now we'll have a look at a selection of oil system related photographs. Well that's it for this video, I hope you found it interesting. If you like what I do on this channel, please click the like button and consider subscribing, and also click the bell. Remember it's free, and you'll receive notifications when my future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.